Take your Bibles tonight and turn to 1 Kings chapter 20. 1 Kings chapter 20. 1 Kings chapter 20. title of the message tonight, Brother Austin, is Raise Your Valleys. Raise Your Valleys. 1 Kings chapter 20. Let's all stand together one more time as I read a few verses here, 22 through 28. 1 Kings chapter 20 and verse 22, the Bible says, And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go, strengthen thyself, and mark, and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year of the king of Syria will come up against thee. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and we surely, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms, and number thee an army, like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse, and chariot for chariot, and we will fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice, and did so. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians, and went unto Aphek to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered, and, all, and were all present, and went, out and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the country. And there came a man of God, and spake unto the king of Israel, and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is the God of the hills, but he is not the God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Brother Jarrett, open us up in prayer, please. Amen. You may be seated. This is a familiar passage. I'm sure you've heard the songs written about this, and this is a passage that folks have preached on many times. But during life, we deal with a couple of different things. We deal with the normals. We deal with the problems. We deal with the heartaches. We deal with the highs. We deal with the lows. But when, this, when you study Scripture, you'll see that God is the God of all of those. No matter where you are, God is the God of all of those. I know that we have mountaintops. I understand that. Mountaintops are wonderful. Uh, we had a mountaintop this morning when $15,000 came in from Brother Carl. I mean, that was just a wonderful thing. We're going to have a lot of mountaintops this week as we go through VBS and we see kids get saved. We see kids get baptized. We see lives changed. That's going to be a wonderful set of mountaintops. We've seen mountaintops over and over and over again throughout the ministry. So we understand that the mountaintops are very exciting. The mountaintops are way up high. You know, it's amazing to me that if you look down from a mountaintop, isn't the view spectacular? When you're riding high and the Lord is blessing in every part of your life, isn't the view just spectacular? You see all the things going well, and there are times that, uh, boy, it's just wonderful to have a mountaintop and get excited about all the things that God is doing. Personally, I believe right now Bethel Baptist Church is drawing nigh to mountaintops that we have not seen before, and I'm so very, very excited about those that are coming. It is certainly wonderful to be on mountaintops, but it does take a special kind of work to get to a mountaintop. You must understand something. Mountaintops just don't happen by accident. We're not going to get dropped off by the helicopter on top of a mountaintop. Mountaintops in churches and folks' lives generally take a lot of work to get there. Yes, we can have exciting things that just sudden happen to us, that's for sure. But the vast majority of time, mountaintops come after work to see those mountaintops. The more the work, the higher the mountaintop. Isn't that what the way that it seems? If you put a lot into doing something well and you put a lot in to try to reach a goal, isn't it amazing to me that the mountaintop and the view seems way more spectacular than the times that you put in a little work and get little victories. Mountaintops sure are wonderful, but there is a problem with mountaintops. There's just not a lot of room up there. It seems to me that when you're on a mountaintop and you study and look at mountaintops, mountaintops certainly do seem to come to a point, don't they? And it sure does seem like at the top of a mountaintop, there really is no other direction to go, but your next step is down. 
And it's amazing that we love the mountaintops or excited about the mountaintops, but assuredly is their life that you're going to have your next step off that mountaintop and you're going to have to take a step in the direction that takes you away from the mountaintop. The view was spectacular just a minute ago, but preacher and I took a step off that mountaintop and now all of a sudden the mountaintop is not that great. May I submit to you this, while there are mountaintops, we don't want to just go ahead and live on the mountaintop. We don't want to go ahead and live there because I got to be honest with you, the mountaintops, although they are high, although they are wonderful, although they are spectacular, you certainly do have to live with some disappointment after being on one. How many would say amen? The valleys in our life, and there are valleys, the valleys certainly can be rough. I know folks that have gone through valleys are going through valleys. I've gone through valleys. Sometimes uh, uh, valleys are very, very difficult. It's not surprising that a difficult valley leads us to do things sometimes that we ought not do. Sometimes the valleys get us closer to God, but there are valleys. May I submit to you tonight, though, that the mountaintop when you're in the valley sure does seem far away. If you think about standing down in a valley and you look up and you see the mountaintop, boy, doesn't it look like there's a lot of work to do? It's amazing to me as you're standing in the valley looking up at where you once were. How many have ever had a mountaintop? Don't raise your hand, but how many have ever had a mountaintop? Find yourself in a valley and say, man, I can't believe I was ever on a mountaintop. It's amazing how close people can get to God and how close they can get to the Lord where on the mountaintop. But then they get in the valley and the Lord seems like he's so very far away. Now may I tell you that sometimes the Lord, the Lord is never far away, but it's amazing how often we have withdrawn ourselves from him. Valleys do happen. They are something that we do go through and there's a couple of different ways we can look at them. Valleys can be a challenge. Or valleys can be a challenge. Yes, I said those differently for very specific purposes. Sometimes it's hard. You know, it's amazing that valleys can become so difficult that sometimes folks don't want to make it through. Sometimes they get down in the valley and they just never get out again. Valleys can be difficult, and we must look at them as something that, yes, the mountaintop can seem far away, and it can be a challenge, or it can be a great challenge that we can undertake to climb up to that mountaintop again. We must remember that there, were, that there was a day in this church that we were talking about having 400 in church. <laughs> Been a while. When we bought that church property and paid it off cash, bless God, got on the mountaintop and said, hey, it won't be long, building for thee in 2003. What year is it? Boy, this has been a long valley. But at the very same time, you must understand when we finally do get to the mountaintop, don't you think that's going to be a sweet view? Why? Because it took so much work. You know, as we look through life and we try to figure out how we're going to get through life, the things that have took the, taken the most work are the things that we appreciate and enjoy the most. The things that have been handed to us and given to us throughout our, our, all of our lives are things that do not keep us on the mountaintop very long. But the times that we pr put in the work and put in the time and put in the effort sure do help when we get to the mountaintop to realize, wow, I really did make it. There's much more land down there when the mountaintop doesn't have very much place to set your feet. Boy, the valley has no problem housing everybody, does it? It's amazing how often we can pull somebody down off their mountaintop to come down with us in the valley. It's amazing how quickly some folks want to jump off that mountaintop and jump right into the valley. But I'm going to tell you this with all of my heart. The valleys are there for a purpose in our life. We don't like to think about that and we don't like to go over that but I must tell you that valleys are there for a purpose in our life we can have growth in valleys growth can happen inside of valleys and a matter of fact I've been told uh, that the most fertile land in the area around mountains is down in the valleys things grow the best there why because you're learning it's amazing how much we or how little we know as Christians when it comes to the things of God bless God I've been saved for a long time and it seems like every day I learn something brand new it's amazing to me as I read my Bible, I've heard preachers say, bless God, I've gone over that thing over and over. I think I've just about exhausted messages. I don't know that you'd ever be able to exhaust messages out of the Bible. 
I think we're going to be up in heaven someday saying, wow, I never saw that before for an eternity. I just believe that's how rich and pure and wonderful the Bible is. And I think we can live a life like that, understanding that, bless God, we can study forever and never grab a hold of everything it's got for us. And as we walk through valleys and walk through those times that Jesus Christ is trying to teach us something through, times that maybe we don't like, but he's trying to teach us to perhaps rely on him. Maybe to look towards that mountaintop as a challenge instead of a challenge. Maybe to look at that mountaintop as something that we remember we got there once. I wonder if we could do it again. There's going to be a day that we laugh at 400. Oh, come on, preacher. I believe that. I believe the Lord's going to do some miracles here that we just have never seen. How many came, came to church this morning thinking the church would be $15,000 richer? How would that ever happen? God's good? I, I don't know what to tell you. God's good? What, what, what do we do? God's good. What are you going to say? And it's amazing. We just spent about fifteen grand on a building. Wow. Thanks, Carl. Here we go walking through life and we see these mountaintops. We say, preacher, boy, I sure would like to stay on the mountaintop. It's amazing how little we grow when God's. And yes, he's that good. I think we ought to spread the word when he has, does good things to us and for us and through us. But at the very same time, I, I want to talk to you about something tonight. And I won't take long. We know there's mountaintops, say amen. We know there's valleys. But just because you're in a valley, I'm going to submit to you that you do not have to be in the lowest of the lows of valleys. Now, I want, I want you to think about something. The land in the valleys is fertile. It is easy to grow in that valley. Growth in the valley that we're in is crucial to a Christian's life. We cannot throw in the towel. We cannot give up. We cannot tell God I'm finished. We cannot tell God I can't do it. We must literally ask God, please help me through this valley because God has me here for a reason. It's not fun, easy to preach, hard to live. Amen. I'm not standing up here saying, bless God, you're all rats. I'm telling you, every one of us is human. Every one of us has these issues. And every one of us has times where we go through valleys that are no fun. Now, I want you to take your Bibles and I want you to turn to Psalm chapter 84. Psalm chapter 84. Psalm chapter 84. And I want you to look at verse 6. Verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. Not in themselves, not in someone else, in thee. In whose heart are the ways of them. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. I want to just think with you for a moment we read here about a psalm where people are passing through a valley a person's passing through a valley we read about this psalm and how this psalm is written to set up something that's coming in the future now if we look at this this person is passing through is that not what it says so that means to me that they are not staying there for very long May I help you to understand that we don't have to stay in our valleys very long. I believe every one of us has discouragement times, hard times, difficult times, tiresome times, wearisome times. I understand all those things. But we don't have to stay there very long. Now I will tell you this. It says, we pass, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. You study your scriptures. Wells were sources of life. You found water there. You found uh, uh, quenching of thirst there you found things there that you could use in life and they would dig those wells as a place where they could live 
a place where they could be because where there's no water, there could be no people. But at this place, this is a place that was barren, a place that was dry. It was a valley. This valley that they were in, they made a decision to go ahead and dig a well there. We're going to make this valley. If we're going to be here anyhow, we're going to make it a well. Now, please understand this. They weren't staying there. A very important point is this. They're passing through this valley, but they're not staying in the valley. They're passing through this place where before there was no water. But when they got there, they decided to make a well there. As we study scripture and we just realize that the, the, the kings in the book of kings, we see, well, he's the God of the hills, but he's certainly not the God of the valleys. Well, I've got news for you. He's the God in both. And the, the longer I live life and the more years I put in for the Lord, I come to the realization, boy, you better take him to both places. Take him to your mountaintops. Bless God, take him there. But also take him to your valleys. You pass through this valley. This person passes through this valley. When they get there, they realize that they're in a valley. And everybody in the world knows that spiritually we can talk about a valley being a time of trial, a time of testing, a time of hurt, a time of heartache, a time of need. This man passing through, whoever this was, decides to pass through this valley and dig a well there. And he's passing through the well. He's passing through. He's not staying. He's passing through. The more I got to thinking about that, I thought to myself, you know, everybody's going to have valleys. But that doesn't mean we can't turn it into something that can be used. It doesn't mean we can't turn it into something that is helpful. Come here, Colton, I want you to help me. Colton is a person coming through, and he's in a valley. Colton's had a difficult time. He's going through things in life, and he decides that he is not going to get mad at God. Now, let me tell you, this is not an easy thing to hear. So I, this is a Sunday night crowd, a little bit meteor of a crowd. And I... I think about these things as people go through valleys and, and I look back and try to figure out how do you help? Because sometimes, folks, they need to know we care about them. Amen? And Colton passing through a valley and he doesn't want to give up on God, though. He's prayed about it and every single person in this room has gone through him and he, he's just not ready to give up on God. And let me help you out a little bit. Sometimes you get yourself to a spot in these valleys where you shake your fist a little bit. And, and if anybody in here says, I've never done that, you're lying to yourself and God. There have been times that people, you know, God, I don't know why you put me through this. And, and believe me, I've been there too. And as I look at these valleys that have come through my life, and I look at what's happened in some of those valleys, I say to myself, man, alive, I'm glad in that spot I just decided to dig me a well. Because when I went through the valley the last time, it was, it was barren. Oh, man, he's barren. It's, it's so, boy, I wish he could have a drink of water. Anything for refreshment, anything to help. And he decides, you know what? I'm not just going to be in this valley and not do something about it. I'm going to go ahead and dig me a well. I'm going to dig me a well. I'm not going to stay here forever, but I'm going to dig me a well. I'm going to dig me a well because I know that if I dig this well... And I put it in this valley. This valley will not be near, near as bad as it was before. Come here, Jarrett. So Colton's in the middle of this discouragement. He's in the middle of this trial. But he digs himself a well. And eventually somebody else comes through this same valley. And the, through the valley of a, of a trial and the valley of a heartache. But they get to this valley. They get to this place. And bless God, they come up to this valley. And they come up to this place. And they say, oh my goodness, I am so glad that there's a well here. It wasn't him that dug it. It was him that dug it. But bless God, I'm glad it was dug. So Jarrett gets in the well. Step up on the first step. Jarrett gets to the well and bless God, that valley's not as deep as it used to be. That valley's not as hard as it used to be. That valley's not as significant as it used to be. And bless God, if Jarrett was getting ready to give up before, he found him some refreshment, bless God, that this person left behind. And because he found him some refreshment, glory to God, he's not going to give up either. His valley's not as deep as it used to be. Then Colton comes back and bless God. Ever been in the same valley more than once? You know, it's amazing. I think the devil 
The devil literally decides that, you know what, I'm going to pick on them where it hurts the most. He never misses. It's, I don't care what it is. With me, it's road rage. I'm just going to be honest with you. The devil picks on me with road rage. Now, I've never gotten so mad I jump out of the car and go to somebody's window. But stop pushing it. <laughs> and bless God, I go to that valley and I get to that valley. And bless God, Colton comes back to the same valley he's had trouble with. He gets to that well and bless God, boy, I'm glad I put that there. Step up on the first step. All of a sudden, Colton comes back to that valley. It's not as deep as it used to be. It's not as hard as it used to be. He's been there. And he's helped. Bless God, Jarrett comes along and he gets that same valley too. Boy, he's, he's headed for some valleys over there in Kentucky, I'll tell you that. Not that it's not great, but it, it is. He's going to have a great time, but at the very same time, he, you're, he's going to find some difficulty. It's, it's college air, real. And I think he's going to enjoy it, but I also think he's going to have some valleys and he's going to get a little homesick. I mean, he's glad to be leaving his mama, but he'll miss his daddy. <laughs> and understand, is she even in here? Oh, man, I missed it. Anyways, <laughs> you, have, you have to tell her later. Anyhow, Jarrett comes to that place of discouragement where he's been. He finds that valley. Boy, I'm glad there was water there. He gets to this valley, and he finds out, bless God, here's Colton. Boy, Colton's in that same valley. Colton made it through that valley before when it had no water. Colton made it through that valley before and left this well behind. He's lived there. He's been hurt there. He's made it through there. He comes back to this valley and finds out, go up one more step. That valley's not as low as it used to be. It's not as low as it used to be. You know, it's amazing to me. You can sit down, fellas. We have... Such a joyful church. I, I, I don't want to be part of any other church. I, I really don't. I believe we have family here. I, I believe we care about each other. And I'm going to tell you, there's been times when I've seen folks in valleys and they didn't decide to stay in the valley without digging a well first. I've seen folks in valleys that said, you know what? I might be down here and it it is what it is, but I'm not going to leave this valley without leaving something behind for folks to be able to get through this. Oh, the valley was destitute and barren, but bless God, somebody brought a shovel. Bless God, somebody decided that, you know what? Being here is not good, but I'm going to make use of while I am, and I'm going to prepare a place for the next person to come through so that when they get here, they don't have to be in this place that I'm in. Bless God, they can be up here. Oh, it's still a valley. It's still down in the dumps. It might be lower than it was, but bless God, when you're thirsty, it sure is nice to get a drink of water. And bless God, you might come to that valley and say, Oh, my soul, here I am in that valley. And it's amazing to me how often the Lord brings people into our lives that have gone through or are going through the same valley you are. Next thing you know, that valley's not as low as it used to be. Oh, it's still a valley. It's still a difficult time. But bless God, it's not near as low as it was. You can see the light a little bit better, perhaps. Perhaps the mountaintop isn't quite so far away. You can help to grow a little bit, because it is really hard to grow in times that you just don't feel like talking to God. And if you say you've never been there, don't lie to God in church. I thought about this and I said, my soul, who would have the foresight to go ahead and dig a well? Who would have the care and, and desire uh, to go ahead and help somebody get through a valley? I thought about these things and I said, bless God, there is a way that we can make sure our valleys get raised. There can be a way to make sure that we don't go as low as we used to go. There can be a way that we make sure that we guard ourselves against going to the valley that uh, perhaps hindered us or perhaps made it so. And I would submit to you this. Number one, if you get yourself to a position where you feel like in a valley, bless God, think of somebody else. What? I'm the one in the valley? 
If I'm the one in the valley, why do I have to think of somebody else? Because I'm going to tell you, somebody else is going to come through that valley too. And I would to God we'd all grab shovels when we were in the valley and start to dig in. And then when somebody else comes through, bless God, they don't have to go through what you went through. Number two, I would not only think about somebody else when I was in a valley, I'd try to find somebody else who's been through that valley. There are Christians in here, in this room right now, that have gone through just about everything you can imagine. Oh, preacher, let me tell you, I'm privy to a lot of your lives. I'm going to start ransoming some of your secrets. I'm just kidding. I'm going to tell you, I know folks that have gone through things. I'll give you an example, and they might be mad at me, but when Brother Carl lost Miss Mary, uh, is there anything worse than losing a loved one to death? Carl lost Miss Mary. He sat by her bedside every day. Miss Mary was one of the greatest people you ever meet in your entire life. She had to be. She had Brother Carl for a husband. It was amazing how quickly, and, and tell me I'm wrong. It's amazing how quickly other widowers were here. Brother Harry lost his sweet wife. Brother John. It was amazing to me. There was a valley. There was a valley. And you having fellowship made that valley not quite so deep. As we go through life, we're going to have these times where, bless God, wouldn't it be wonderful if you got yourself into a valley and someone was there with a glass of water? Wouldn't it be wonderful if, man, if somebody was there to say, hey, Christian, I know you're suffering. I know you're struggling. But bless God, aren't you thirsty? Yes, I am. Well, here's a glass of water. When you're in a valley, think of someone else. There might be somebody falling behind you. Not only that, when you're in a valley, don't only think of somebody else. Go find somebody else that has been in that same valley. And number three, remember when you're in a valley, valleys are only temporary too. Oh, the amen stopped, didn't they? Oh, preacher, it sure does seem like the valleys are longer. They are. Mountaintop's only this big. Next step is down. Great thing about a valley. Next step is up. See, what we live life in the most difficult thing in the whole wide world to realize is we are going to have valleys. We, we, we ask God why. God, why, why would you put valleys in front of your people? Why would you give valleys to a Christian? Oh God, if you know everything and you're all powerful, boy, I'm hitting some heartstrings right now, aren't I? If you're all powerful, if you're all almighty, and if you're all wonderful, why in the world do your Christians suffer? Why in the world do you put us in valleys? Lord, why aren't there already city running water in the, in the valley? Bless God, why isn't there a ladder down in that thing? Or pick me up in your godly helicopter. Why would you put me here? Well, let me ask you a question. If you lived on a mountaintop all of your life, I bet you the view would start to dim. I like to see God win victories, not just to live in one victory. As we study this, you must realize that valleys are something that you don't have to face alone. Valleys are something you can go through, not just with people around you, but also with the Lord. One of the greatest valleys ever spoken of in the Bible is the valley of the shadow of death. I talk about that eight million times in funerals, but think about this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Is there a deeper valley than that? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. When in the valley. <laughs> I look at that verse, and, and I always do this, and it's probably dead wrong, but I don't care. I love the picture. I see thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I see Jesus coming in that valley with two walking sticks. And he hands one to Colton and says, come on, buddy. 
I'll walk you through. Come on, buddy. I'll take you through the valley you're in. I don't want our valleys to stay as deep as they used to be. I want our valleys to continue to get higher. Continue to get to a point where you get closer to the Lord so you realize, you know what? Valleys just aren't quite as bad as they used to be. Can bad things happen? Yes. But if we realize while we're in them to dig a well for someone else, we realize when we're in them to find somebody who's been through that valley before, we realize that when we're, in them, when we're in them to go ahead and seek out the Lord while we're there, I think we can get through them and make them not as deep as they used to be. I believe Scripture says to us, if you rely on God and draw nigh unto Him, He'll draw nigh unto you. That's not, not just for mountaintops. That's not just for plateaus. That's for valleys. And I believe we can make our valleys higher than they've ever been. I was talking to Freddie. And I said, man, when I first moved here, our biggest problem was where the next place we're going to play basketball. And that's about the truth of it. When you're a kid, not much. You don't have many problems. I hate to say you kids, you don't have much problems. Your problems are big to you, but when you get older, you'll understand what I'm talking about. What a joy it was. The valley of my wrist hurts, I can't play softball. It's just not that big a valley. The valley of, bless God, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it on time to my buddy's house. It's not a valley anymore. You say, well, preacher, boy, the valleys sure do seem to get deeper as you get older. No. Valleys become more occupied, maybe. But they're places that we can find water. If we, if we dig it while we're there, we can find help for people who have been there. And we can walk those valleys with the Lord. I believe he'll take us through them. You're going to have mountaintops. Boy, those are wonderful. We're about to have a bunch, by the way. It's going to be the Alps in this place in not too long. But at the very same time, with mountaintops come valleys. Let's remember who we're walking with. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for this night. Lord, we've got a big week ahead of us. Lord, we've got a week that we're really going to have to work hard. Lord, we're really going to have to do things that perhaps we don't do every single day. But Lord, I believe that you can help us. I believe that you've got a great week planned for us. I believe we've dug the ditches. I believe we've made pepper preparations. And Lord, I believe that we've done the things that we can do. Now, Lord, please help us. Lord, you need to be seen. Lord, you need to be heard. And Lord, I want these kids to know who you are, not just for this week, but for the rest of their lives. Lord, I want us to seek you out. I want us to get a better relationship with you. Because, Lord, you surely are the answer for the mountaintops, but you're surely the answer in the valley, too. And Lord, I thank you for everything you've done, everything you're going to do. And, Lord, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for some mountaintops. I know they're coming. Lord, please bless us.